Hello there YouTube, I'm Wheelchair21 and on today's review we're looking at the Bandai Mini Plot Versus Vehicle Gatai Series 02 for Pat Kaiser. Like Lupin Kaiser and even in Q Ranger, this assortment is sold in one complete set, meaning you get all three trigger machines with an additional good striker to have Pat Kaiser stand alongside Lupin Kaiser and as well as it promotes that we can use these dot dial fighters or should I say trigger machines and good striker with the mini plot versus changer and on the side we have a better look at our trigger machines as well as our versus changer and on the side we also have more additional artwork for them and to justify that this was the front we have the top of the box here which shows our actual in-show suit with the pat rangers similar to lupin kaiser pat kaiser features five interior boxes for each of the individual pieces as well as the box art is similar for every single box in this assortment. There is no individuality about them anymore where we would know and identify with which piece goes to which box just outside of the assortment telling you what numeric number matches which actual machine. Which is also pretty good though that each of the trigger machines go with their matching member. So we have Ichigo, Nigo, and Sango, and on the back, the same artwork we've seen thus far. All right. Here we have the Mini Plot Pat Kaiser pieces all assembled. We have all of our trigger machines. We have Ichigo, Nigo, Sango, and the Good Striker in its actual trigger machine mode. And first off, let's look at the boots. This boot is still, yet again, the same one we've seen with the Pat Rangers to be used with the Good Striker. Pretty much you use it with the Mini Plot versus Changer. Whereas the red one here is very different than your blue one used for the dial fighters this one here actually latches around the wheels of your trigger machines and then uses it to slide to the bottom of your versus changer or the top depending on how you turn and rotate the overall device but pretty much it serves the same purpose and like i said it only really stays snugly together when you actually have it latched to your actual machine now let's go looking at our overall pieces first we're going to look at pinks because she is the right arm, she is the right hand, and honestly, while it looks very ambulance-like due to the more of its bigger, bulky design, it is supposed to be just a police car, because as you can see here, we have the actual similar style seen through green and red. We have nice details here where we have a little 03 on the side of the stripes here, and yet again on this side, another 03, as well as the Pat Rangers badge. Now we have her baton here that does come out to extend and it can, you know, knock into things as well as it can swing off and peg into the tire here, which actually resembles our hand. It's also good that the bumper here also symbolizes your fingers to your hand. So it makes more sense that this here is your actual fist when you're going to be using it as a weapon. What's also cool is the actual trigger is a nice piece of plastic to stand out with your overall toy, as well as when it becomes your actual arm, you just pull out the front here to reveal your lower forearm and wrist joint slash elbow joint. It's a little wonky, but it gets the job done. Next up, let's look at Nigos, who is a nice green squad car. What I like about it is really the style of the difference in the frames. Like while they all do kind of look similar, there are minor changes to the actual hood of the car, the front bumpers, and whatnot. I like the actual stickers that are pretty much shared throughout it and the others for its number as well as its badge. And I really do like the front of, like I said, the fender, the hood, and whatnot. Especially due to the fact that the barrel of the gun does pop out of here. It is kind of crazy though how gun-like this piece is. And it looks really cool and nice. It also makes me kind of remember of... Gumford from Go Under being a police car slash dog. It really just looks kind of similar to Gumford. And I know people may say it doesn't look like Gumford at all, but that's just me. Same thing with actual pinks is that it pulls out and reveals your actual interior for your fist and your hand, which is really nice and cool. And I do really enjoy it. Here we come to Ichigo, who is the head of Pato Kaiser. He is the leader of the team. And honestly, the red metallic stickers throughout the body of the mini plot trigger machine here is wonderful. I love 
how it stands out. And I even love how, because he is number one, the actual numbers stand out even more than three and two. It just looks cool, looks great. And I really do love the fact that he's like a six-wheeled cop car with a seventh wheel that is supposed to be like a nitrous like kind of engine to make it go faster and move faster. One thing I do kind of hate though is the fact that the head of Pat Kaiser here is like very far back and you would think that it's supposed to pull up and attach more towards the front. However, we'll see in very shortly when it combines, you actually have a kibble or an extra piece that latches in to give you a more realistic face uh, for your mecha. It does kind of suck that it is an additional piece, but it can't really be helped due to how they overly designed this figure. Lastly, we come to the good striker in trigger machine mode. Now, honestly, it is identical because it is the same freaking vehicle that we've seen with the Lupin Rangers. No matter what, since Goody the Good Striker is able to switch between a trigger machine or a dial fighter, there's nothing really to go further in depth over the fact that when you start to transform it into <laughs> your actual Pat Kaiser, the only difference here is you pull the legs up and you don't pull down these pieces here on the knees. You just leave them up and you fold this back and you do the same thing. It's pretty much like the hokey pokey. You turn yourself around and that's how it's all about. Like it's literally the same exact thing. And honestly, it is my more preferred version of the Good Striker being the trigger machine, but that's practically all we do for the torso. And then we just start moving the hands as so and arms to plug them in. You have a little piece on the bottom here. You plug it in. You hope it locks, locks in place better, which honestly, this is a whole lot tighter than your freaking dial fighters, which is kind of weird that it's actually tighter, the trigger machines, but that maybe makes it better overall so it doesn't go flying off the handle or off the actual shoulder joint whatsoever. And boom, we got our arms done. And then for our head, like I said, we're going to need to pull this all the way out, bend it down, use the peg to plug into the top here, slide our face plate in here, and pretty much we are now done with our overall transformation. And here we have Pat Kaiser fully assembled and built. One can say immediately that this is practically the same figure and toy due to the fact that Good Striker is the basis for your torso as well as your legs. So pretty much the articulation there we've already gone over when it comes to Lupin Kaiser to Pat Kaiser. Now, however, since the trigger machines and the dial fighters do have some differences in how they're constructed, we do have a wider range of shoulder articulation. However, it is garish and looks totally like it shouldn't be realistic. And due to the fact that the hoods of the car, the front fenders are your fists and supposed to be your forearms, you don't get a full wide range of articulation to pose your figure. Overall though, I do think it is one of my more favorite designs in mechas, and I do like its weird robust design. Whereas compared to Lupin Kaiser, this one is more articulated. This one has a wider range. It does have issues with its shoulders, whereas this one doesn't, but it has issues with its wrists. Like it's one of those ones where it's a give and take, where while these figures and these machines are kind of designed off of each other to work in tandem, you don't really know which one is the better or which one's the worst. Because I gotta say, over overall design, I do like the trigger machines as Pat Kaiser. As for the dial fighters, I'm not sure if I like them combined or if I like them individually. It's one of those things of I like aspects of both teams. I like aspects of both mechas. And I think that's why Pat Ranger and Lupin Ranger or Lupin Ranger versus Pat Ranger is becoming a really well-loved Sentai due to the fact that it makes you choose sides, it makes you choose what do you like and what do you don't like. And overall, I think that for, you know, being $20 kits, whether you go with Lupin Kaiser or you go with Pat Kaiser or $40 for both, you're getting a really awesome deal. I mean, you can find these at stores like CS Toys, Hobby Link Japan, and Ami Ami, and you'll be really happy. Now, if you want to get all in one set, I really would insist that people go for the SP edition where it's in clear plastic, where you'll get a good striker, parts A and B, as well as your three dial fighters and your three trigger machines. The only problem is you won't have 
two individual good strikers where if you get the Lupin Kaiser set and the Pat Kaiser set, you're guaranteed to be able to display both in a nice, cool, you know, tandem, whether they be fighting each other or working together like a real Sentai team. Nevertheless, though, if you like this review, please leave a comment, please leave a like, and subscribe, as well as follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and at HeroClub.com, and I'll see you all next time with another rolling review and or Doyle's DVDs.